Hello, everyone. Welcome to the preview session for Crackness. I'm Chen Chen, and this is Le Fan. We will present this talk together. People have different requirements on different types of software systems. What is Crackness? It is hard to define without a comprehensive specification. But we do know a number of cases that are definitely incorrect, like incorrect outputs, software crashes, resource leaks, memory corruptions, and others. Bugs are widespread in the software systems. The number of bugs increase quickly as the code base size increases. This inevitably increases the burden of software development. Bugs appear both at in-house testing and release code. Take Microsoft applications as an example. It has 10 to 20 bugs per thousand lines of code during in-house testing. However, even with through testing, bug still remains in released product, reduced to half bug per thousand lines of code. To fix these bugs, patches are common in large systems. Linux kernel gets more than 10,000 patches per version. Apache receives around 15 patches every week. Bugs are costly. It will cause service outage, security vulnerability, medical crisis, and so on. These typically causes a lot of money and information, or even deaths of people. Software crackiness is a long-studied problem. Researchers have designed a wide spectrum of techniques to detect and fix bugs in different stages of software development and deployment process. In the de development phase, formal verification and static checking are two of the typical approach to detect bugs and offer some level of crackiness guarantees. Then software goes to next step, testing with a set of design software inputs. There are many techniques about how to generate test inputs. Bus testing is the main technique that is covered by these year's papers. Testing cannot guarantee to expose all bugs. During runtime, logging, dynamic checking, and failure prevention techniques are to detect, diagnose, and handle bugs. Finally, bugs that are ma manifest at runtime need to diagnose and fix as part of software maintenance. In the next few slides, we'll give you some brief background in these key techniques following these four stages. After that, we will give you an overview of five papers in this session that represent the state of arts of some of these techniques. First, let's start with static checking at development stage. After implementing a program, a widely used process in industry is code review. During a code review, people look at the code to find anti-patterns that might suggest bugs. To automatically do this, we can replace human code reviewers with compiler. We let compiler scan through the code and find anti-patterns. Different bug patterns will lead to different static checking tools. Lots of works have been done in this area. Some looks for dereferencing null pointers, some looks for renaming errors in copy-pasted codes, and some look for concurrent bugs by analyzing correlations between variables accessed in the code. Static checking is good in a lot of ways. First, it has good scalability. Normally, the static checking tool only needs to do a linear scan of the code, which makes this technique suitable for very large systems. Second, locating the bug is easy using this technique. Once we find the bug, we know exactly where it is and can tell that to developers. However, this technique is limited to specific bug patterns. If the bug is caused by some unknown pattern to us, we couldn't apply this technique at the first place. Secondly, since we don't have runtime information to confirm that uh, what we found is indeed a bug, we may have some false positives in our findings. Besides static checking, another option at development stage is formal verification. Let's look back and see the program behavior. Given a program, at runtime, its behavior is determined by its input data, the environment that may affect the program, and the order between events, which we call interleaving. We can be general and treat all of these as input. Given a specific input, we look at the program's behavior. The behavior can be correct or incorrect based on a specification. If we have a way to say that the program is correct with all possible inputs with regard to a correctness specification, 
we call this way formal verification. The first way to do formal verification is model checking, which means we treat the program as state machine and iterate through all possible states to make sure the program behaves correctly. There are two ways to do model checking. The first way is to explicitly visit every possible state. This means that we actually run the program and build state graph on the fly. An example is CMC, which checks correctness of C programs using such method. Another way is symbolic model checking. Such model checkers represent the program's behavior under different inputs with symbols. The correctness of the program is then represented with a Boolean expression with regards to the, those symbols. Then we send the expression to a solver to see whether it is satisfiable. An example of this is CBMC, which is used to check C or C++ programs with this way. The issue of this method is complexity of visiting all states grows exponentially with the size of the program. Therefore, for large and complex systems, it is often hard to model check them. Another way to do formal verification is to prove the program like proving a theorem. Several systems are proved in this way. For example, the SEL4 kernel and the FSCQ file system. To prove like this, first, we need to define the program's behavior mathematically. Next, we also need to define the correctness specification mathematically. Finally, we send both to a theorem prover, for example, COG, to determine whether the correctness specification holds true. There are some disadvantages proving programs in this way. Describing the system mathematically can, can take huge manual effort. It often happens that the size of the proof is several times to the size of the program. Second, there may not be an easy correspondence between program behavior and mathematical statements. There is a gap that requires developers to fill in. Intelligence is needed to figure out a way to specify a program so that theorem provers can understand it. Now the software goes to next step, testing. During testing, we need an input to the program, execute the program and check if the execution is correct or not. If not, a software bug is exposed. Unlike verification, testing does not and cannot cover the entire input space. The challenge is how to increase the chance of getting bug triggering inputs. In past years, symbolic execution is a popular testing approach to get test input. It's reasoning from code structure, data dependency, and control flow. Suppose we want to fail this assertion. First, we use symbolic execution to get two path conditions related to this code line. Then these conditions are fed into conference solver to get a concrete solution. Now we know when x equals 11 and y equals 12, the assertion would fail. This approach is effective, particularly on small, small software. However, it is too expensive for large systems. To solve this problem, fuzzy testing appears. It randomly generates test inputs and saves time for code analysis. Different from the symbolic execution, it now works in a loop. After executed a test, it collects and processes feedback. Based on the feedback, it applies random mutation on the input C to get a new test input and loop again. During this entire process, the key challenge is how to mutate data. It is even more challenging to mutate structured and domain-specific data. In summary, first testing has lower cost and less implementation effort than symbolic execution. However, it is challenging to design an efficient mutation algorithm and manage structured inputs. Also, it highly relies on randomness, lacking reasoning. Even with very careful testing, some bugs may still escape to the runtime. Here, we can use the additional runtime information to guide bug detection and fixing. Software log message is a well-established program practice to record this information. It records program status and relevant operations. Therefore, developers could easily reproduce a particular bug and diagnose the root causes. Logs also help to find optimization opportunities as it provides rich runtime information and profiling details. Dynamic checking is designed to detect software bugs and volatilities during program execution. It analyzes execution following bug patterns, including locking and security problems. 
When a risky situation detected, it is able to react immediately and terminate the program to prevent some security attacks. Of course, this approach has its own drawback. It will introduce high runtime overhead for the extra checking. Also, like static checking, it only targets particular bug patterns. When some errors are detected or pre predicted at runtime, runtime failure prevention techniques can try to mask or get around the error, preventing failure like deadlocks, memory corruptions, performance degradations, resource leaks, and others. Now we go to the last phase, maintenance. If a bug is exposed, developers need to fix it with a patch. Software patching is expensive. They have to test the patch thoroughly to avoid introducing new bugs. In addition, deploying a patch typically requires restarting the software. To solve these problems, researchers propose a patch management tool to help developers understand the impact of a patch. Automated patching to reduce many effort of testing and deploying. On the fly patching to apply a patch without stopping software services. We will introduce the five exciting papers about uh, in, in the correctness session one by one. First, there are three papers about formal verification in this session. Let's first review the process of doing formal proofs for programs. As mentioned earlier, we need to describe the program behavior mathematically. Then we specify the correctness of the program. Finally, we let a prover to prove the program. The first paper is this AI. The target to be proved is distributed protocol. This paper is related to uh, reduce the manual effort in specifying behaviors of programs by automatically generating invariants. The second paper is Go Journal. This paper goes through every step of implementing and approving a journaling file system. The third verification paper is Storm. It verifies data access related policies in web applications. It introduced a unique way of specifying program behaviors and correctness through a type system that can be checked by a type checker. The first five paper is titled This AI Data Driven Automated Invariant Learning for Distributed Protocols. It is from Columbia University. The paper looks like invariant synthesis. Invariants can help proving distributed protocols inductively. If we can automatically uh, like synthesize the invariant of the target system, we can reduce manual efforts in describing the system's behavior and improving the system. But why is this challenging? There are too many potential uh, invariant candidates. It would take a lot of time to check whether every random expression is an invariant of the system with a solver. This paper proposes an effective way to synthesize invariants. It uses trace data simulated from the protocol to quickly reject wrong invariants. This can reduce the number of queries about is this an invariant to solvers. Moreover, it visits all invariant candidates in a clever order to ensure every invariant with a bounded size is visited. Our next paper in this session is Go Journal, a verified concurrent crash safe journaling system. This paper is from MT, both, uh, MIT, Boston College, and MPI. The paper is about proving a crash safe concurrent journaling system. Proving such system is challenging at every step. For example, we need to specify everything of such complex system mathematically, like crash behaviors and crash safe correctness. Uh, moreover, modularity is also needed uh, in the proof because, because of the system's complexity. This paper introduced implementation and verification of a journaling system. It also introduces a framework to deal with the challenges mentioned. A simplified and verified NFS v3 core is built with GoJournal to confirm GoJournal's usability in practice. Our third and last paper about verification is STORM. Refinement Types for Secure Web Applications from India and uh, UC San Diego. In web applications, we don't want users to be able to see data uh, that they are not supposed to see. We need data-dependent security policies to ensure this. This paper verifies the policies at static time. Previous works have done this at runtime, but runtime checking will introduce performance overhead which is critical to web applications. Also, 
Security violations found at runtime can be expensive to fix. We want to do this at static time. This paper proposed a unique way that describes security policies as refinement typed, uh, refinement -typed uh, ORM models. In this way, whether the policy holds can be checked at static time with a type checker. Developers just need to specify the policy in a centralized source file. The next paper is titled Horcrux Automated JavaScript Parallelization for Resource Efficient Web Computation. This work is done by UCLA, University of Michigan, Harvard University, and Princeton. This paper is about automated parallelization. This is related to failure prevention in runtime stage because many parallelization is prone to concurrency bugs. This paper focuses on automated parallelizing JavaScript web pages. As many parallelization not only cost time, but also very likely to introduce concurrency bugs. To solve this problem, this paper proposes whole cross. It separates the workload into two parts. First, the server finds the parallelism opportunity with web dependency tracking. Second, client uses information to schedule tasks to a bunch of web workers in JavaScript engine. With this server-client cooperation, Horcrux achieves around 20% speed up over LTE networks. The last paper in the correctness session is Seriza, reducing redundant sanity checkers in C or C++ programs. This work is done by University of Southern California, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and ETH. It focuses on dynamic checking at runtime stage. The study aims to reduce overhead of dynamic checkers, also called senators. As introduced earlier, runtime dynamic checkers are effective, but introduce high overhead. For example, the average overhead introduced by address checker could be high to 33%. This work used static and dynamic hybrid analysis to find likely redundant checkers. It applies co correlation and analysis on static and dynamic patterns and infer redundancy. This is all for the preview of our correctness session. Stay tuned for the talks of these five excellent papers from their authors.